give you a perspective of how dry we've been through August and now September. Look at this massive crack in the soil. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're out here in some 99-day corn. We've had two weeks of over 100 degree temperature. Our corn is maturing and dying way faster and earlier than it did last year. So we're gonna go out and do some crop checking. So to get a gauge of where we're at for yield and moisture on this field, I'm gonna go in, grab a couple of ears, do a couple of ear counts, and go from there. This particular field was planted May 7th to a 99 day hybrid from DeKalb. We walked in a good amount now off the headlands, so I'm gonna start pulling a couple ears to see what things are looking like here. To have a rough estimate of what kind of yields this farm is gonna produce, I pulled a couple different ears. They're all 18 around, so that's the number of kernels around the circumference of the cob. So here you can see this one's 18, and they were all 30 to 34 long. So I take 34 times 18 to determine how many kernels I have on one ear. And then I take that times the number of ears I have per acre. So to figure that, I count every ear that's in 17 and a half feet, as that is one one thousandth of an acre. I came up with 35 plants for one one thousandth of an acre, which is exactly what we put down, 35,000 plants per acre. If I take my 18 round by 34 long, I come up with 612 kernels per ear. Take those number of kernels on an ear times the 35 plants or ears that I found in one one thousandth of an acre, and it equals 21,420 kernels per acre. The Iowa State math says that on average 90,000 kernels equals 56 pounds. So take my 21,420 divided by 90, and that equals an expected yield of over 230 bushels per acre for this farm. Personally, I'd be shocked if this farm raised over 230 bushel corn. We definitely have the fertility out there. We're just lacking some rain here later in the season. I think the kernel size and the kernel weight is gonna be the two factors that are gonna hurt us. There's no great way for me to calculate that into my yield estimation other than dividing by more kernels per pound. But right now, today, that's just what I'm gonna roll with just for a yield estimation since we'll be hopefully harvesting here in less than three weeks. I had a good look here at our 99 day corn. We got a field just down the road with some 106 day maturity corn. So I'm gonna head in the pickup and drive down there to see what that corn's looking like. This is our Obermiller farm. We planted it to DKC 5665. I wanted to come in here, grab a couple samples, see what kind of moisture we're at here on September 5th. To give you a perspective of how dry we've been through August and now September, look at this massive crack in the soil. It actually goes as far as I can see. We should not be seeing this. There should be moisture here closing this in. So this is not a good sign for how dry we are. One thing I'm noticing here with the drone is this lighter streak of corn near the edge of the field. That is where we did a fungicide check. So we did not apply fungicide to those 24 rows. And as you can tell, the plant health is definitely not near as great as to where we did apply. So hopefully we'll see that show up on the yield monitor come this fall when the combine gets rolling. Here are the three ears that I pulled from this 17 feet, five inches. I'm gonna go replicate that three more times, grab some more ears and then head back and bring them to the truck. One thing I'm noticing with the drone is as you can see, these blank spots in the field, that is where we have tile intakes. So it's kind of low spots in the farm where water normally will sit. And obviously during a dry year like this, those are our better spots on the farm. Here's what I found out there for ears. Most of them are 20, 20, 20, 18, 18, 18 round. So to be on the consistent side, I'm gonna say that they're all 18 round. And then in terms of ear length, most of them are 25, 30. So again, to be on the safe side for my yield estimates, I'm gonna use 25. One thing I like about this corn, 5665, it has a deep kernel. So that adds a lot of kernel weight. So I'm gonna run these ears back up to the yard and we'll get a test weight on this corn. To test the moisture contents inside this corn, I got our grain tester starting up. That's inside 
our grain shack. So in here we have all of our controls for the grain leg, the pit, the bins, and most importantly the dryer. So I'll be spending a lot of time in here this fall. But for today's purposes, I'm gonna start shelling some of these ears that we grabbed and we'll run them through the tester to figure out where we're at for moisture. I got the hopper filled up with our corn. Let's get this thing set up to take a sample to figure out what kind of moisture we're pulling on this corn. Here we go. As the tester showed, this corn's at 36% moisture. We usually like to harvest our corn around low 20s, 18, 19 percent. So on a good day, we can lose up to a point and a half of moisture, hot, windy day like we have today. Or on a cool, humid day, we can only lose at most a half a point. So I would say we're easily three weeks out from combining corn. It seems like harvest is gonna be ahead of schedule compared to normal. So I figured now would be a good time to do my last go around on the bench site preparations to make sure everything is ready to roll for this fall. First thing I gotta do is get some gravel to fill in underneath these fans. So we put on a fan hanging kit on this bin as well as this one and there used to be a concrete slab underneath. So I'm gonna go get some gravel and put a little bit in that hole there. There, that looks a lot better. Got some of that gravel filled in under the bin fan. That way when I'm walking around here late at night this fall, won't trip around that hole. Since this bin used to be over here and used as our wet bin, we had to redo all the conduit for the electrical work. So there's some holes in the side of the bin. So I'm gonna take these small screws and fill in these holes. That way this bin should be pretty much airtight for when I'm running the fan. Pretty hard looking from the outside of the bin to make sure all these little tiny holes are filled in so it's easier if I just come on inside and then I can look to see where more sunlight is poking through that way I know where I gotta put more screws next thing I got to do is build a fan cover for this 15 horsepower high capacity fan since it's got a little bit different fan than the one we took off since it's high capacity uh, I gotta build that so just taking some measurements and that way I'll have a fan cover over there so the wind won't run that propeller all the time. next thing we got to do is connect this bin fan to our 36 foot bin. It was unbalanced inside here so the guy rebalanced the motor so now just hook that up to the bin. Got the fan back on, put my silicone around there that way it's airtight. The reason we put fans on our bins is to lower the grain temperature of the grain inside the bin. So we'll use these in the fall, mostly at night when the temperatures are below what the grain is from the field. And then we'll run them again in the early winter to cool the grain down in the bin. This auger here we use two times a year, one time to unload both of these two 36 footers. And then we use it to fill our other bin that's on our far away farm. So now we got to take this spout off of here. That way it'll sit into the lid of the bin that will fill this fall. Oh. Oh. From our grain bin project that we did this summer, we got a new distributor, which means we also have a new distributor wheel. And this is what you use to select which hole the distributor goes to. And they just wrote on here with a black Sharpie marker. As you can tell, that's starting to get wore off by the sun. So I printed off some labels that I'm gonna cut and put on here. That way it'll be more permanent. The labels I put on here look a lot better. As you can see, it's gonna be a lot easier to read and just hopefully avoid any mistakes that somebody might have 
when adjusting this this fall. Here we are inside our large 60,000 bushel corn bin. To get this thing ready for this fall, I need to check the oil that is in this gear case that runs the power sweep, as well as there's a gear case down here that will run the unload. Obviously there's a bunch of fines and small pieces of corn that fell through here, so I gotta vacuum that out. That way I can check to see how full the oil is down here since it's honestly never been checked since this bin was built, which is over 10 years ago now. It wasn't fun vacuuming all the bees wings and dust out of here, but it is low on oil, so it's a good thing I checked it. Now we'll just top it off and hopefully that'll last me another 10 years before I gotta check it. On these two bends and the rest of all of our other bends, I got the sweep augers greased, checked the oil in the gear case, and the bends swept out, so they should be ready to roll for this fall. Now the only thing left to check is on the leg, and that's this K-valve here that fills our 42-foot bend. So I'm gonna shimmy up the ladder, and I'll meet you guys up by that K-valve. The reason behind this K-valve is since this bend is so short, the grain has to go a long way to the bend, and this will slow down the grain flow. That way we won't have any crack kernels inside the bin. You're about to see why if we don't clean this out, it would create a problem this fall. I've learned my lesson on that before. If you don't clean that out, you get rotten corn that sticks inside here, and it'll actually plug up this pipe down to the bin, which will slug the leg, which is not a fun day. So I got it cleaned out now, just gotta put that cover on, and this thing will be ready to roll. That's it on my checklist of all the things I need to get done here at the bend site prior to fall. If I were guessing, we'll be into harvesting beans in less than 10 days. So if you want to see more of that in day-to-day -day things, make sure to go down below and you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook at High Tech Farmer. But that's going to be it for today's episode. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.